All right, Dr. Wald, here we have the lateral cervical. So we draw the atlas uh, plane line. You start in the mid of the posterior arch, midpoint in the anterior tubercle, draw a straight line. Boom, then you start at the posterior part of the occiput right before it curves up, and then you get a line right in front of the foramen magnum, draw a straight line up. They're diverging, so you got a uh, occiput stuck in extension, or uh, you could have a nice AI atlas, depending. So you just check that out, you show them, then we have the healthy spine over here, boom, show them you want it to be parallel. How does yours compare? Then when we come here, you go to this anterior portion of the cella turca, that's a circle, circular uh, part of the skull, you get to the anterior portion, you draw a straight line down. Then you get to the inferior anterior portion of C4, you draw a line across, measuring it, 3.5, every 2.5 centimeters. Uh, adds 10 pounds of pressure on your spine, joints, discs, nerves, spinal cord. So then we have a weight here on the ground. Boom, we have them pick it up, hold it next to your chest. Now put your, sh now hold your arms out straight and try to hold it. And then you show them how the forward head carriage will affect the entire spine. You feel all those muscles are compensating to hold your weight up. Well, that's what's happening in your head as we speak. Okay, moving on, we have the Gonstead lines right here. You go to the uh, inferior anterior portion, inferior posterior portion, and you draw a line. Boom, boom. I'll show you one right now. So we'll click. We'll delete. Oh, it takes a couple. Let me see here. There it is. So you, we come over. We go boom. So you go from the... The inferior anterior to inferior posterior, draw it out, then I bring it up so I can still see that disc space. Pretty straightforward. You want those lines to be converging but not crossing on the screen. Um, if they cross, that vertebra has gone posterior. However, nowadays very few people have lordotic curves, so what you look for are the lines that are most diverging. So that would, that would be down here, and then the posterior bone is subluxated. So we go, okay, are these, bones, are these lines converging? No, what are the most diverging? This one, okay, that's a subluxation. Boom, then you get the uh, Ruth Jackson stress lines. You go from the posterior superior, posterior inferior portion of C2, draw a straight line down, and the posterior superior, posterior inferior portion of C7. Sometimes you can't see C7, so you just use C6 and you draw it up. They should crisscross around C4, C5 disc space. You can see these don't cross at all. Well, they're on each other, so you have 100% loss of the curve. Lots of times we'll uh, draw 100% right there. And we just evaluate. We always start with the lateral cervical. Typically, it's the most distorted. Um, that cervical sagittal curve is so crucial to the, uh, the health of the patient. Then we'll come over here. We'll go to the... The lateral uh, lumbar, we really just, uh, we, we, you can do uh, L, uh, L1 and L5, and you, the posterior, uh, superior, posterior, inferior margins, and draw it up and see where they're crisscrossing. Most people have a curve in their lumbars, so we just evaluate the disc spaces, uh, degeneration, things like that. Here's the money maker. You have the Gonstead pelvic lines. You draw a line from the superior portion of the ilium out the superior portion of this ilium and out and then you get down to the tubes, ischial tubes and you draw a lot straight line from the bottom and you measure the two. The one that's longer will be the PI ilium. You can also look at the bigger uh, uh, hole that is also some uh, typically the PI but the measurements will just tell you straight up. So that's uh, rotated back, that's your PI ilium and that's uh, almost always a pretty major twist. This lady her uh, pelvis, she's a young girl, was uh, actually pretty good. Four millimeter difference, but her neck was was messed. So we really, we went and we showed her the, the cervicals mainly. And then on the, uh, on the A to P open mouth, you can do, well the, here what I did is I measured from the uh, odontoid between the uh, lateral masses. The bigger one is where it is the side of the la uh, atlas laterality. You can also come down here, find the C2 spinous draw it up to the uh, the jaw or the mastoid and measure and then I'll give you the C2 spinous rotation. 
But uh, here are the lateral cervicals, what I showed mainly in the ADP pelvis. And this I just really did for myself to know the uh, atlas laterality when I adjust. Um, any questions, uh, feel free to call me and I can walk you through. But the uh, this is the one I would really focus on. This lateral cervical is uh, it's awesome. Have a fantastic day. I hope that helps.